Hey guys, it's Em here. Welcome back to Grace's Corner. I thought I'd make a video today, a tutorial video of how I made this beautiful uh, polymer clay and Lisa Pavelka resin. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me get close. It's just stunning. It's so cute. And it was very simple to make, easy to make. And yeah, I enjoyed making it. I made a couple other different pieces that I'll show you at the end of the video. But just really quickly, um, we're a growing community, a learning community, and I was inspired to make these. I actually followed the tutorial somewhat of, I think it's Back to Earth Creations by Yvonne Williams. She is an amazing, amazing polymer clay uh, craft artist. Um, she uses a lot of wire wrapping in her work, and her work is just stunning and beautiful. So I did come across her video of her version of wire wrapping and so I kind of wanted to simulate that because I thought it was beautiful and so this is kind of how I did it and if you're interested in this stuff and a lot of other videos definitely subscribe and leave a comment down below if you tried maybe her video if you've seen videos like that but yeah thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the end of the video hey everyone welcome so I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. Now I've used this technique before. Um, I could really go in and like start chopping, but I kind of wanted to use my, like what I mean by like just like chop, 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 chop. But I kind of wanted to use more of a grater. So I do have a grater here. And pretty much I'm just going to be shredding these random scraps of clay. What I'm trying to get, like I said, I've never tried this before. Um, what I'm trying to get is like a mosaic pattern. So I've never done it with this type, uh, type of jewelry. So yeah, we're just going to grade it. I'm careful with these things. These things are so sharp. Like I swear I have ruined like nails and stuff doing this. So yeah, I'm just going to like grade it. We can just put it all together like in a ball and just grate it up. And this is what it's going to start looking like. Now, let's see. Just mush that together. I wanted like separate pieces. So that's why I'm like just trying to keep the pieces as separate as I can but it's gonna be some mixing anyway when we actually like stretch the clay out later. So, all right, I'm just kind of clearing that off. So this is what we have. We have a whole mix. Now you can use different colors. I just pretty much use the Sculpey uh, Primo clay. Um, and I, I just love this clay, it's very flexible. Um, they have certain like different types like this kind of clay uh, Which is more of like a mat like this kind of, kind of Yeah, so they have different types and different textures this one the primo especially the accents are like really smooth FYI, so I'm just gonna take this kind of like mash it together now this is going to be some like craft with me type of thing because like I said, never done this before, but so what I'm trying to do is get this into a block and we're going to see what that's going to look like. And if we like it, we will proceed with the pattern. If not, then we will try something else. So you see, I could already see the colors coming through like separately. Yeah. So we're just gonna, I find like using the table is pretty good to get like a square shape. Yeah, you just wanna make sure it's really compressed so you don't have any like air bubbles or pockets. Just mix it with your fingers. All right. There we go. And mind you, this is scrap clay, so 
you can always save your scrap clay, which I always do because you can always use it for a different project or blend it out with a different color to use it as a base. Um, it just adds volume if you need it. So we're gonna be cutting into this. Normally I like to waste because we have um, conditioned this clay so it is pretty soft, but um, for the sake of this video, make sure your blade is clean. We're just gonna be cutting into it to see what kind of pattern it looks like. Okay. So this is what we're working with. Um, let's see how it looks stretched out. So I am gonna be taking my ruler. We're just gonna be stretching this out a little bit. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna run this through my pasta machine and we'll see what it looks like then and see if we want to work with it. Okay, so this is on setting six. On the pasta machine, I am gonna try rolling this out again. So this is what the pattern is coming out to be. And I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not not a fan like I really like the blends here oh sorry I really like the blends here but I'm not a fan so what I'm gonna plan on doing is just putting this all together all right just putting it all together some little air bubbles here but yeah and then we're just gonna roll it so at least it'll give us like a different effect now this looks pretty cool <clears> then <throat> so once you have it semi well mostly rolled right into a log you're gonna twist 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 and I really like that pattern right there reminds me of like a sky we're gonna twist so the idea is that the colors in this log are kind of like <clears throat> not blended together but they're kind of swirling around each other and this is really cute. You can also use that pattern as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting over like some sort of cough. So then I'm gonna take that rolled log and just I'm gonna tightly roll it into a ball. Just a little ball. Now you can use the pattern like this and roll it out so you can get the swirls. But for the sake of what I wanna do, cause I want it kind of messy, almost like a scattered universe type of thing, like, like space kind of. So I am just gonna bring this together. And inside this cube, we are going to have yeah, it's raining outside. I don't know if you can hear the pitter-patter. <coughs> but yeah, we're going to have a whole bunch of different swirls. Yeah, my doggie's mad. He doesn't like the thunder. He does not like it one bit. Okay, so now that we have it, I'll show you... And it's just a simple technique to roll it. You just want to manipulate the clay however you feel. Like I could have rolled it, doubled it up, went into a log again and rolled it. it. It would just have made the swirls a little bit more closer together. But this should be completely fine. All right, we're gonna cut into it. Let me just, okay. So we're gonna cut into it. Oh yeah, now that is cute. Okay, so that's definitely, definitely workable. Oh, got some, some feather. Yeah, so I'm gonna do is roll this out a little bit. 
then we're gonna run it through the pasta machine. Oh, I love that. I love it. Now be careful. My service is like, it's not like a non-stick, but see how it just sticks? So you just wanna be very, very careful of the surface you have. Oh, see, I lost some. Yeah. Oh, well, this could be added to the scrap pile. Yep. All right, so this is the pattern right here. What I'm gonna do is I wanna stretch this out. Wow, it's really raining outside. So yeah, what I wanna do is stretch this out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna roll it again on number six on the pasta setting. And this is what the pattern looks like. I think it's gorgeous. Maybe we can do a couple more things with this pattern. So maybe not like um, a necklace and a, another necklace or a ring. We'll see. Anyways, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on my bigger piece. And so I have this wire right here. It's a flat, uh, I believe it's titanium wire. It's very, very flexible. And I'm going to get maybe about... And I love that you can measure with this. It's so maybe about like a ruler's length around that. And I'm gonna cut that right there. Beautiful. Okay. Careful with the pattern. I kind of messed that up. Anyways, so now I'm going to be taking my round nose pliers and I'm gonna be starting with N. Now this can take a little bit of finessing and moving around, but once you get the hang of it and practice of it, you'll see that it's really, really simple. So I'm just gonna take that, roll that in itself. So I don't know if you can see, but it's like this. And I'm just going to I'm following it, so I'm holding it tightly, but I'm just giving it a nice shape and just, I'm not forcing it, I'm just letting the wire go around. Yeah. And what I mean by like finessing it, you are going to, you may have to um, move it around a little bit if you want a different shape you'll do that so and you know it doesn't necessarily have to be completely 100 percent perfect but just work with what you have and that's why i love crafting because it's like artwork um so yeah you can always hold this part and go around bend it like that i'm gonna make the top half now so I'm gonna come in but I'm gonna come in the opposite way so I'm gonna come in and I want the top to be slightly smaller than the bottom so I'm just rolling that whoop, rolling that in I'm doing the same thing just following it along following it along Okay, so now we have this S shape. Just keep going. You could just play around with it. Now what I'm trying to do, you see this gap here? I'm trying to bring this as close as possible. So I want this to be as close as possible. And that's gonna help us to, this is a pretty good shape right here. It kind of looks like a little snowman. Um, yeah, bring that a little in. Let's bring this a little closer. You can go like this. Bring this a little closer. There you go. Okay. Move that a little out. 
So you're just gonna finesse with it a little bit, play with it a little bit, see what works for you. But I think we have a really good shape. Now what I'm gonna do, because you see how it's not like flat, I'm gonna be trying to make this as flat as possible. So I'm just getting my roller and rolling onto it. Okay. So now it's looking very, very flat. I'm do that to the other side. Okay. So now we have our flat, pretty much piece. Um, spiral piece. And sometimes you want to size it. So you do want to make sure you have enough room for the the pattern or if not you'll go in and make the pattern bigger or you can stretch it out so now i'm going to take some uh, extra polymer clay so some more black clay and i am going to roll it on the thickest pasta setting which mine is a one i'm going to be rolling this on a one moment to do that so it's pretty thick pretty pretty thick all right so just a little little bit of scrap clay here um okay so now that we have that we're going to put our pattern remember the side that you want you could always switch it up if you'd like if you like this side to be better with more like swirls um but i'm really digging this side so I'm just going to lay that down, right? And I'm going to put where I want my design and my pattern to be. So I'm really liking this, this way. I like that swirl right there. Perfect. So I really, really like that. So I'm going to go back, take my roller again. I'm just going to roll onto this. Just give it a nice, nice roll in. And you'll see the wire go right into that clay. Okay? And it should be very, very simple to come off. Especially the edges in the corner. But you want to be careful about the design right here. So I usually like to cut it. I like to cut it. Uh, where's my knife? My picky knife. So I do like to cut it probably right about here. Right about there, that's pretty good. And right about here, pretty good. And the rest can come right off. And you just wanna make sure, you can cut it a little bit further. That's probably what I'm gonna do. A little bit more. And don't worry about if you're worried about the stabilization of the piece because the wire is really and the clay is really going to hold the piece together. So you can just go as close as you want to with it um, or you can just go as far um, out as you want. But I want to keep some resemble of like the whole like shape so I'm just going to keep that like that. now. I'm gonna take our, um, well actually, before I do that, cause I really should get like a non-stick surface, cause I always have issues with that. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna pretty much roll this scrap clay up, blend it out a couple times, and then I'm gonna go back in, and I'm gonna, um, maybe on the number, for setting of the pasta machine. I'm gonna be rolling it to put it on the back. So let me show you. So I'm just squishing this up. But yeah, so I'm just gonna be very careful and mindful. So cute. Now you can leave it just like this, but I do wanna give it a nice like back and cover up uh, the swirl. So I am just gonna go in again with the black and actually I could use this scrap clay might be fun let's do that let's do that let's 
use that black. Okay, so I just preheated my oven to um, 280. So yeah, I have this um, scrap clay here. And let's see. I think this side is smoother, so I am going to be putting it on this side. Now, what I'm going to be doing is you could use some liquid clay. Um, I'm not going to be using liquid clay for this one. I feel like regular polymer clay just adheres well. But if, you, if I was like adding like maybe smaller pieces, I would probably use that. Sorry, it's hopefully my coffee. Hey. It's not in the way. Mm. So good. Okay. So I'm gonna cut around it. Cut around. Okay. I think we have like trapped trapped hair in there. Alright, so I think I Cut that part. Good, 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 good. Not that. Cut this out. So I just want the back to pretty much be smooth. That's what I want. Okay. So now this is our back. Now you can make this like all black if you want. Um, you could not add this extra layer, any this extra piece. Um, and if you want, you can also have this be a dual pattern. So it could be like, like if you were to, like reversible. There you go. I was trying to find the word. Now, what I'm going to be doing is just bringing this down a little bit more. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So now we're just gonna get this up. Perfect. And this is our back. You wanna smoothen the edges. Woo! Woo! It's falling. Pretty durable, everyone. Pretty durable. Okay, just wanna make sure. Alright. So this is what it looks like right now. I think it looks so freaking cute. I love the swirl patterns, but just wait until we get our liquid gloss on here. It's just gonna be even more uh, stunning. So um, I should like try to take this off. Scrape it right off, scrapey, scrapey. Come on. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, just want to clean up the edges a little bit, right, just clean them up, make sure they're smooth. This is when we pressed it down that last time, so it is going to come out from the sides just a little bit. There we go. Alright, and any, any of the things that you could not do now or you forgot to do you can always buff it out a little bit later which i've done so yeah so this is just the back i'm not really concerned about the back because i know um we're not gonna be people are not gonna be well it's not intended for people to be looking at the back but if you want to be a perfectionist you definitely can just go with like an all black back that's fine or no back at all whichever you want to do Crafting and art is supposed to be really fun. So I thought I'd make a pendant as well. So I'm going to be taking some of this scrap clay right here. Smushing it up. Now this I want to have like a, a flat surface. So like I want this to be indented just a little bit. So I'm going in. Just putting this in there. I'm not like like doming it, like overly stuffing it, but I am gonna be putting some of it in there. 
well, on top. So yeah. There we go. There we go. Ooh, this kind of looks so celestial kind of, right? Like a planet of some sort. But it's just our scrap clay today. So, so now that we have that, I'm taking this piece that I rolled out um, and I'm just going to be putting that right over the piece like that. I really like that pattern. And we're just going to peel off the sides. Boop. Okay. And this is the same pattern from the same block that we used. So. Now you want to make sure that you have all your air bubbles out so we don't have any problems later. I'm just going to take a blade or whatever you use to cut your X-Acto knife and you're just going to start cutting off the sides. Da -da 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 -da. I've made a lot of these before. These are so cute and they're just so simple to make. Um, they're a really great craft idea. Um, I actually started using these pendants with like, like uh, pictures and glass cabochons and those are cute but um, when working with polymer clay um, it's just th these can be just like really easy and really fun to make. Cut, cut, cut. Okay. All right. Just making sure we got everything all cut up. Really need to probably invest in a non-stick surface. It's like it sticks to me too. All the little shavings. So I'm just cutting this. I hope I wasn't out of focus with the other one. So pretty much I just cut the entire side. Now I'm pressing down a little bit more. Just want to see shaving off as much as I can because we are going to be putting resin over this as well. So great, great. So. Then I'm going to just wipe down the surface with some alcohol, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I got um, my alcohol and what I'm going to be doing is just pretty much cleaning the top, getting all those fingerprints off. Yeah. Okay. We're going to be doing, see how it picks up some of that stuff. You don't want to go too hard. You just want to lightly um, just clean the surface of it. That's all you're doing really. Okay. Now you could add more glitter to this. Um, if you want, you can, you know, maybe like shave some of the pattern off to get some of the fingerprints whatever you feel comfortable just don't go too deep because then you'll get some of that clay okay so um my oven is already set i'm gonna put these on a tray and i will see you when they're baked all right so they are pretty much baked and ready to go um, I think they came out really, really nice. Um, but they are not ready yet. So, because I don't have a tile, I'm going to be using for the UV lamp uh, just this thing over here. And because this has a bail, it's not a flat surface. And we need a flat surface to pretty much put on there so it can level it out. We're just going to stick to the back and find a nice, OK, 
Okay, maybe we should do this first. Flat. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Looks flat to me. <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to go in with some Lisa. I feel so sad. She is almost done. Uh, this magic gloss is amazing. I use it for almost every project if I'm glazing with polymer clay and um, any other projects that I need glazing. Uh, it just makes the color of polymer clay come out just so freaking good. Ooh, so excited. All right, so I'm just getting some on there. Getting a nice amount. Always start with a little and then expand outward. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab uh, anything to spread the gloss with. So we'll start with this one. We're just gonna be spreading it, encouraging it to go to the end. Okay. Now, I need to definitely encourage this only because I've had the gloss for a while. And sometimes it tends to thick over time. Um, they recommend that you store it in a cool, dry place. And sometimes, you know, depending on your environment or where you store it, the temperature can change. And so you don't kind of know really what the gloss is exposed to, so it can thicken up. But yeah, this gloss has never, I don't think it's ever failed me. It's always worked very well for me. Just encourage it. This takes quite a lot of gloss. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It does take a lot of gloss. So if you're worried about like price, there are probably some cheaper alternatives out there. Um, I just prefer to use uh, the Lisa Pavelka UV gloss because it's, it's just, for me, it's like it, it's always worked perfectly. I've never had any issues with it. Um, but then again, I haven't really tried other UV glosses, so. So now you do wanna make sure it's all in the crevices. You might need to add some more, and I'm thinking for the bottom part, I may need to add a little bit more. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Oh my god, don't tell me it's running out. I'm just so devastated. Oh, oh. Add a little bit more here too, just in case. Oh, come on. Okay. So I'm gonna spread this around and I'll come back when I'm ready. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. Just FYI, you definitely want to make sure you get any air bubbles out and that the surface is even and clean and free of dust and all that good stuff. All right, so I'll see you when I get back. So this is how it came out. The back is still drying, but it is such a beautiful piece. Oh, so gorgeous. I love that you can see the shimmer in that. Different colors. This is the side angle. That Lisa Pavelka really gives it a beautiful, beautiful gloss. So I do want to show you also this piece where I didn't stretch out the pattern. Again, simple, gorgeous pendant. I don't know if you can see how beautiful. It looks like some 
the galaxy type feel that I wanted to go for. So cute. So aside from this piece, which came out stunning, um, I do want to show you a couple more. So this is another one. I added some sparkles to that. This is a black and white. Has some, some rainbow glitter on the side of it. They came out so freaking gorgeous. This is another piece, another pendant. Came out so freaking cute. You can do all different shapes. Um, in the video I saw with Back to Earth Creations, she actually made some leaves. This one is a stunning piece. So cute. This is Makume Gane pattern that I had used. So it's just a style of like folding clay. So I love that one. So cute. I did a all black one with some silver glitter. All of these are topped with Lisa Pavelka, by the way, uh, magic gloss. You just add a ring to it. So I'm just going to be adding a string like I did with that one. So I have that one, this one, just a similar style, twisted up the clay, different colors, just to get a different uh, pattern. I just really like the golds and the silvers, and that red just really stands out. Using the same pattern as this one, I did it again. Now this one, I was really disappointed. I don't know if you can tell right here. It does have a uh, air bubble. I don't know if my camera would focus, but it does. Um, I forgot to heat it up, I guess that part. But you live and you learn. But still, nonetheless, if you look at it from afar, it's a stunning piece. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Again guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and definitely check out Yvonne Williams tutorial of her version of this necklace as well and her wire wrapping uh, skills. She's an amazing artist so I always give credit where it's due and thanks again and I love you, be true, be you. Mwah, take care and today is Labor Day so have an amazing Labor Day um, and don't party too hard or maybe party hard whatever you feel comfortable with all right take care and I'll see you in the next video bye stunning bye